Welcome to EP Wealth's Inform Investor Market Update Series. We do these weekly, usually. Sometimes we take off for a holiday. Joining me today is Adam Phillips, Managing Director of Investments at EP Wealth. Let's do a quick look at the year to date on the markets. Just kind of see what's happening. The growthy NASDAQ is up 6.5% year to date. We are pushing Valentine's Day. So that's a month plus in. The S&P 500 is up 5.4%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 2.6%. And then some of the, not alternative indexes, but something that shows us the breadth of the market and the health of the market. The S&P Midcap 400 is up 1% and the Russell 2000 is down eight tenths of a percent. But recently the Midcap 400 and the Russell 2000 has been showing some activity. Adam, let's talk about that Russell 2000. There's a lot of small banks inside the Russell 2000. Is that what's leading to the underperformance of the Russell compared to the S&P 500? Hmm. Yeah, well, look, that's a great place to start, Rob. I, I think that the underperformance of small cap actually goes back um, before the recent banking issues. I, I can touch on those. I think that certainly is a factor. But small caps in general is an area that we've been underweight uh, across our portfolio strategies for some time now. We've really favored quality here uh, over Geez, the last, I, I was going to say 12 months or so, but I think it actually goes back well beyond that. Uh, and, and the reality is that we know that this is a difficult environment for companies because of rising interest rates and what that does to debt burdens for those that have to issue debt. The, the larger companies are those that typically have uh, stronger balance sheets, better cash flows. And a lot of them actually took advantage of the low rate environment uh, that, that, we, that we enjoyed not too long ago. Uh, to issue debt and and what we what we call term out their debt, meaning that they're not going to have to worry about these these bonds coming due anytime soon. Small caps uh, are are not as fortunate for the most part. A, a lot of them do have upcoming maturities, and and many of the underlying debt that they hold is floating rate. And so we've seen that that's really put pressure on on them on their profitability. And we we talked, I believe, late last year about some of the different ways to measure small caps, but. Close to 40% of the Russell 2000 index, the primary small cap index, uh, actually contains uh, non-profitable companies. And so I, I think that that's really, really important here. And, and so if they weren't profitable when rates were favorable, they're probably not going to be profitable uh, now that rates are elevated. And so I think that's the first thing that's really plagued small caps and why we're underweight. Um, now, more recently, we've seen um, I, I'd say some some fear uh, or or risks uh, come up uh, to um, to these small cap companies, primarily in the banking space, as it relates to commercial real estate and an area of the, of the economy that uh, that we've been watching for some time. And so now we're finally starting to see some of that come through. You know, at first it was reminiscent of what we saw last March with the regional bank failures. Uh, I, I think this one's going to be pretty isolated. It, it's New York Community Bank. Uh, and we, we've seen that the market value right now of this company uh, has fallen about 50% or a little more than that uh, just over the last couple of weeks. And so I, I think many are, are asking themselves, OK, is, are, is there more to come here? We think that this is going to be an isolated event. Uh, but still, we, we think it, it points to challenges for not just small caps, but small cap banks, meaning regional banks. And that's an area that we've avoided for quite some time as well. We actually exited our regional bank exposure back in, uh, in 2022. Uh, and we just haven't really felt inclined to add back, even though we know that uh, they've, they've taken a beating. They took a beating in the first half of last year. We know that there's some fear now resurfacing uh, within that, that group. Uh, and, and so we're, we're just a little bit reluctant to, to, uh, to I guess, dip our toe in just yet. Uh, we want to see what happens here. We know that even though we, this is likely to be an isolated event, uh, about 70% 70, uh, 70 of the exposure um, uh, within these regional banks is commercial real estate. This is where the, the majority of it is, is, is held. Um, the larger banks uh, tend not to have too much exposure uh, to, to uh, commercial real estate. And so we think that they're, they're better protected in, if this does turn out to be something worse. Now, I want to change the topic and talk about the S&P 500 hitting 5,000. I do some work in local television and my local television boss, he always loves those big numbers. He's like, can you talk about the big number? Whether it be Dow 10,000 or S&P 500, 5,000, you know, when they hit those milestones and I always kind of snicker at them and go, it's not that big of a deal. It's just a number. 
but psychologically, it probably is kind of a big deal. And I don't want to weigh your thoughts, but what are your thoughts on the S&P 500 hitting 5,000? I, I think it is a, it's a round number. It's a, it's a big round number yeah. for sure. And, and so, you know, I, I guess the question now is, is you know, the markets are up this morning. I, I guess the question is, do we sustain this level or, or um, do we kind of take a breather now or do we shoot right through it? Um, let, let's just acknowledge that it has been a, a pretty, um, uh, pretty significant climb here, <clears throat> excuse me, over the last few months. And we talked about it, I think it was last week that we said the market's up close to 20% from its October lows. And so that's a pretty big move. It's, it's really, if you look at you know, historical averages, this is more than one year's move in, in just a few months. And so the, the market is certainly, uh, it's okay if it needs a little bit of a breather here. And we're always mindful of sentiment. Sentiment's important. And, and what you don't want to see is euphoria. You don't want to see complacency. And that's why our guard is always up. Mm -hmm. We would expect that a lot of the returns maybe have been pulled forward, a lot of what we were likely to see in 2024. And let's just take a look at our surroundings and, and I acknowledge the fact that there's the economy has been strong. We know that the Fed has, even though they've walked it back to an extent recently, they're, they've basically acknowledged that the odds of another rate hike are extremely low. And at some point uh, in, in the not too distant future, it's more likely to be this summer than, than in March, they're going to start cutting rates. And so I think there's reasons for um, for the market moving uh, as much as it has, but uh, let's let's also not assume that that's that's going to let's not extrapolate that and, and expect that to continue here uninterrupted. We know that there are geo geopolitical risks. We know there's a, an election around the corner, so let's just uh, let, let we don't want to step too firmly on that gas pedal. Uh, so that's why I'd say we're we're more uh, cautiously optimistic here, and and we are mindful of where these flows are going. You know, this is. So far this year, this is very similar to what we saw in 2023 in that the leadership is really concentrated among a handful of names. It's those magnificent seven companies. It's actually more like the Fab Five or whatever you want to call it. I, I think that there's a few that have really pulled away from some of the other ones. I won't go into the names here specifically, but it's it's not uh, all those companies are, are participating. It's, it's that a few of them are really leading the charge here on an equal weighted basis. So if you just give everyone an equal, put them on equal footing, all the constituents of the S&P 500, you're looking at gains that are closer to one or 2% through today. And so, and that's on the year. And so it's, it's uh, we're seeing the market move in the right direction. Uh, we think the economy is in, in good shape here, but we're also mindful that uh, markets often take a little breather uh, once they hit these these historical levels, and and especially after the run that that we've seen in in the, the recent months. Good answer. Um, and it is kind of nice psychologically to see that S and P five hundred five thousand because I've been in this business many years as have you, and we remember when it was a much smaller number. Now, what moves the S and P five hundred in the end is earnings, and we are smack dab at the end of earnings season for the first, uh, I guess, for the fourth quarter of 2023 being reported in the first month, uh, first couple months of 2024. How is the earnings season going so far, Adam? I didn't do my homework, but it, something tells me you have. It's going well. I, okay. You know, the, the story over the last few quarters has been that earnings have have really surprised to the upside. They've outperformed expectations. And, and I think we're always bracing for, okay, what are we going to learn this earnings season, what are what is management going to tell us about uh, you know this quarter? It was what what are they seeing within uh, supply chains with, with recent disruptions, or what types of wage pressures are they continuing to see now that could change the narrative that we're we're starting to see inflation moderate? Those are the things we were kind of prepared for, and we haven't really seen it. We've actually seen uh, companies that are, um, I, I would say, just generally speaking, they they appear. Uh, pretty optimistic. They're happy with the results. They're happy where things are going. And, and so I, I think that's that's incredibly supportive of the outlook. Um, but just if, if you look in the rearview mirror, what, what we learned in the fourth quarter is that most of these companies are outperforming. And uh, we're about, let's say, three-fourths of the way through this earnings season. It is, again, a lot of it is, um, is associated with those larger um, companies, a lot of them are are part of that magnificent seven. So if you excluded them, then earnings wouldn't be 
uh, quite so robust, it would still be positive. But let's just acknowledge that um, that it's still these larger companies that, um, let's say, are moving the needle, not just in the broader index uh, level of the S&P 500, but in terms of earnings contribution as well. I guess just, just to put a finer point on that, it, it's, you know, one of the things that that one of the questions that I've received a lot is, hey, with all this, the big move here in the Magnificent Seven and some of these underlying companies, is this just the dot-com bubble all over again? And it's, look, they, they've they moved uh, a lot in a relatively short amount of time. Valuations are, are it, it, it's it's pretty hard to, you know, wrap, wrap your head around it. But if you take a step back, and you know, you look at the fact that these companies are actually generating cash flow. They have solid balance sheets. They are they're growing. They're but they're not just growth companies. They have defensive characteristics as well. And so I think they, to an extent, can justify these valuations. Now maybe they've gone too far, too fast. But these are quality companies. And what we are seeing uh, that they have all reported so far uh, fourth quarter earnings, except for Nvidia. I believe they report on the twenty first. Mm -hmm. But what we are, what what the 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 data so far shows is that these companies, in terms of earnings, have seen about thirty percent earnings growth in twenty twenty three, and you compare that to the remaining companies, call it the S and P four hundred ninety three earnings growth of a couple percent in twenty twenty three. So you know this this is to an extent they've justified this move, and and so that's really I, I think we've seen more of that. Um, um, it really just c continues to lend support to the argument that they are quality, right? And and maybe uh, some of this move is justified. And let's finish with a topic of what can make things go wrong or what can give a little gasoline to the fire of the S&P 500, the CPI and the retail sales numbers. Economic data due out this week that could be market moving is what I'm implying. What are your thoughts on what we might see out of CPI and retail sales? Yeah, you know, so... Uh, Inflation is tomorrow. Uh, we get okay. the CPI report. This, so before the next FOMC meeting in March, uh, the, the Fed is going to get two inflation reports, two CPI reports, and the first one comes out tomorrow. So they'll have another one after this to digest before they actually make a decision of whether to move or not in March. Um, but this data is it, it is not expected to come in any hotter than in the previous month. If anything, it's uh, on the headline number, meaning if you if you include food and energy prices, could actually tick down a touch. But I think what a lot of people are going to be looking at are the underlying components. What's driving it? Are, are used auto prices uh, coming down? Are things like rents coming down? Um, and, and that lends support to uh, the argument that we're seeing uh, price pressures moderate, right? We're, we're seeing this disinflation um, and, and that's supportive of uh, the Fed and, and their move to eventually cut rates. We know that that the Fed and what they've said more recently is that they, they believe the next move is a rate cut. They're not going to commit to when that happens because they want to see more evidence that inflation is making continued progress towards a more healthy uh, level, call it a 2% target. And it's just not there yet, but it certainly seems like it's it's moving in that direction. And, and so I, I think what everyone's looking for is just uh, continued um, evidence of that on the retail sales number, so that comes out on Thursday. You know, part of the 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 story over the last year has been, you know, the the resilience of the economy and the resilience of the consumer. Everyone came into 2023 expecting a recession, and we didn't get it. They, they thought a recession would happen because of how quickly the Fed adjusted monetary policy. Normally, that causes a recession. It causes consumers to pull back, businesses to pull back. We haven't seen it. We've actually seen the, the consumer continue to do what they do best. Now we can talk about what's driving that, but I think that's what makes uh, this this retail sales report that comes out on Thursday that much more important is because we know it's been as, as an engine for the economy. Um, it always has and, and certainly has over the last year or so. And so let's see if the consumer is still spending, um, where they are spending. Uh, and, and I think that'll help inform us about that the health of the uh, of the economy. You know, December, the previous reading on on uh, retail sales was incredibly strong, uh -huh. and so part of what I'm wondering is is there a little bit of a holiday hangover? Right? Are people were they not as inclined to spend in January because of how much they they appeared to spend in December? Um, so I think that's one question that I have coming into Thursday's report. But uh, but on the whole, I would say most are expecting a, another decent print there. 
we do tend to spend our paychecks if we have a job. And right now the employment numbers are telling us we have jobs, Adam. Thanks very much. I want to remind everyone, this is a great time to reach out to your financial planning team. It's a great chance for you to also go to our website, epwealth.com. We've got a lot of tutorials and uh, a lot of seminars online that you can watch and learn from and share with your family and friends. Um, I want to say I'm Rob Black for EP Wealth's Informed Investor Market Update. He is Adam Phillips, Managing Director of Investments. Good day. Thank you.